Hi there friends, my name is Aura Lessonjack. I'm a self-taught artist and I love to share watercolor tips and techniques with new and intermediate watercolor artists. For this project, I actually haven't used watercolor ground before. It was just a total experiment and I didn't know what to expect, but I will show you how I prepped the panel, how I painted the robin, and at the end I will tell you my overall thoughts about using watercolor ground. So let's start painting. <music> I have this small 5x5 five five cradled panel and I had covered the surface in gesso previously and let it dry just because I wasn't sure if the watercolor ground would absorb into the panel so I wanted to seal the surface. So right here I have this little bottle of Daniel Smith watercolor ground and it came with a small Primatech set that I bought on Amazon. I'm using an old brush to spread it across the surface. It's pretty thick and it helps use a little water to help smooth it out. So I let it dry completely, then I lightly sketched the robin using the photo reference I found on pixabay.com. I will link to the photo in the video description. Starting the painting now, I'm using some gold ochre to paint the first layer of the chest, and my first impression is of how bright and rich the color looks. It's definitely not behaving like paper, and it seems to sink into the layer more than resting on top of the surface like it does with paper. I'm deepening the color now with a little burnt sienna. The first layer dried really quickly so I can work with this new layer of color right away. Next I use some sepia for the darkest tones and I did lose a little bit of footage, but the main body I painted with a mix of sepia, gold ochre, and neutral tint. For the legs, I used the same colors and a tiny bit of alizarin for a peachy color. I switched to my smaller brush to paint in more feather detail. Another difference I noticed is it seems the edges of the detail don't hold up like they do on paper, which at first was kind of annoying, but the more I worked it, I realized the ground provided the capacity to do multiple layers, and the detail did seem to hold after the more successive layers I did. It is kind of hard to explain, but it's actually a pretty forgiving surface, since you have the ability to keep adding and enriching the painting.
I had a lot of fun with the background where I could really see how to work with larger abstract shapes and wet into wet washes. I'm using sap green mixed with gold ochre and neutral tint for the different variations of green in the background.
I used white gouache for the final highlights and to bring detail where I had the hardest time, like the tiny toes and the top of the beak, and also just some extra feather detail to add some dimension and bring the robin forward from the background. I tinted the gouache with the goldish green mixture for highlighting the top of the branch. and just finishing with a little bit more detail and deepening of colors. So overall, I like the idea of watercolor ground, especially for these pre-made little panels, since you don't have to worry about paper buckling and you don't have to frame it. Um, I think the surface, if you're more used to painting on paper, it takes a little bit more time to get used to. Um, you have to really build up your uh, layers to get darks and it takes longer to dry in between. But I like how it looks and I like the potential that this creates since besides just a small panel you could paint really large if you had enough of the ground. Um, you could actually paint on so many different surfaces uh, when you're not exactly a traditional watercolor artist um, like me. I like that there are different ways that I can use watercolors um, to experiment and paint on other surfaces. Now I will always love my cotton paper, but if you'd like to try something new, give this watercolor ground a try. It's, um, it has really unique properties and you might enjoy it. Thank you again for joining me today. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more watercolor tips and tutorial videos. I also read and reply to your comments, so tell me what you really want to see or what you might be stuck on with watercolor, and hopefully I can help answer your question in a future video. In the meantime, click on one of these videos to keep learning about painting with watercolors. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.